Hello everyone and welcome back to Coach Craig Sports. Today is Monday, December 20th and this is the NBA DFS video for today. So before we get started, just going to mention real briefly that I did not make any videos this weekend. I was out of town, just kind of focusing on some other stuff, getting away for a little while, but I'm back at it this week. You can expect a full week of videos once again, so nothing will be changing there. But since we haven't had a video for a couple days, I will not be doing the recap of yesterday's picks since it was a couple days ago. But we'll go over the injuries and play for tonight's slate as well as my picks for both FanDuel and DraftKings for tonight as well. So first off, we're going to start off with the injuries and in play for tonight's slate, and there's going to be a bunch of things that we are looking at, especially since the NBA has kind of turned into a big slob of COVID fest at this point in time. There are a few games that have already been postponed, but we're going to take a look at the 76ers and the Boston Celtics first off. This is a 7.30 start time. That's when lock will be tonight. So... As of right now, the following players are out for the 76ers, Andre Drum, Shake Mill, and Georges Niang, and Ben Simmons. The following players are questionable at this point in time, and that's Joel Embiid, Danny Green, Furkman Korkmaz, Tyrese Maxey, Powell, who I'm not even sure who he is at this point in time. He must have just joined the team recently, and then Springer as well. So a lot of injuries, a lot of COVID stuff in play here for the 76ers. We'll see how it all shakes out throughout the rest of the day. That's definitely going to open up some value if some of these guys were to miss. And then for the Celtics side, the guys that we already know that are out are Grant Williams, Broderick Thomas, Josh Richardson, Jabari Parker, Al Horford, and Juancho Herman Gomez. Jason Tatum, Dennis Schroeder, and Romeo Langford are all this is questionable. We'll see if any of those three players play tonight. If they do play, it could change some things around quite a bit. And then Sam Hauser is listed as a game time decision, but he is, looks like he's in the COVID protocol as well, so I will assume that he is going to miss tonight as well. Then we move over to the Houston Rockets, who are without John Wall, Kevin Porter Jr., and Jalen Green. And then Armani Brooks is questionable to play tonight. We'll see if he's in the lineup or not. They do get Christian Wood back as well, so that's definitely something that's going to be a little bit different from them tonight. For the Chicago Bulls, they're finally playing once again after postponing a couple of different games last week. It seems like pretty much everybody on their team has been on the COVID list at one point or not throughout this season. There's a couple guys that are still on there. So the people that we're looking at that are out already for the Chicago Bulls, Patrick Williams, Matt Thomas, Zach Levine, Alize Johnson, Io DeSomu, Troy Brown Jr., and then Derek Jones is listed as doubtful for tonight's game. So pretty much we're looking at about a core five players for the Bulls, Alonzo Ball, Alex Caruso, Javante Green, DeMar DeRozan, and Nikolai Vucevic. You'll see some Kobe White and some Tony Bradley off the bench. Maybe a couple of the other guys they brought in, but there ain't much depth here. There wasn't a lot to start with and is not getting any better by any means. The Thunder are all the way healthy at this point in time. The Grizzlies are without John Morant, Zaire Williams, and Sam Merrill. And now we do have Brandon Clark and Aldama, both listed as questionable at this point in time. So we'll see if they're back today or not. Then we move down to the Charlotte Hornets, who are without Cody Martin. He is out for tonight's game, and he is in the COVID protocol a little bit later than all the other guys that they had. But fortunately for them, the rest of the guys did come back. So just Cody Martin out tonight. Then for the Utah Jazz, we got Yudoka Azubuki out once again. And then Fitz is a game time decision questionable to play. Not really in the rotation either way, though. Moving down in the Kings, we got quite a few guys out once again. So we got Davion Mitchell, Alex Len, Lewis King, De'Aaron Fox, Terrence Davis, and Marvin Bagley all out once again. And then Rashawn Holmes is questionable to play. He's been dealing with that eye injury or eye infection. I can't remember exactly which it is off the top of my head, but he could be back tonight. If he's back tonight, he's definitely in play. If he's not, then obviously we're looking at some Tristan Thompson at that center position once again. For the Golden State Warriors, they're without James Wiseman, Andrew Wiggins, Clay Thompson, and Jordan Poole. So obviously the newest ones there are Jordan Poole and Andrew Wiggins. They're both in the COVID protocol as we speak. For the San Antonio Spurs, they're without Zach Collins once again. And then Doug McDermott is questionable to play. He did not play yesterday. He's dealing with like a tooth infection. So we'll just have to see how he feels throughout the day, if he's able to go or not. For the Clippers, they're without Preston, Marquise Morris, Kawhi Leonard, and Hartenstein in this game. So, you know, so Hartenstein and Morris are kind of big ones being out there at this point in time. Then we got Paul George listed as questionable. We'll see if he's back today or not. He's missed a couple games at this point in time. Serge Ibaka, game time decision. Looking like he has a chance to play today. Going to be some pretty good depth behind Zubak since Hartenstein is out for this game tonight. But with that being said, that's a quick little rundown on all the injuries in play for today. There's definitely going to be things that we're looking for throughout the day. And I'll be posting all the injury updates and starting lineups down in the comments below throughout the day. But with that being said, we'll get moved over to DraftKings and talk about my picks over there. So we're going to start off with the point guard position, Tyrese Halliburton. $7,000. 
looking for 35 points out of him. It sounds like a little bit, but it really isn't that much, especially when you consider all the guys that are not playing for the Kings. And obviously when De'Aaron Fox is not on the court, Hal Burton is able to take over that point guard role, that ball handling role. His usage rate goes up. Pretty much everything that you can say good about him, it goes up. So it is a tough matchup against the Golden State Warriors, who are one of the best defensive teams in the league. But overall, Hal Burns going to be playing big minutes and being very productive. I'm projected for 36, 37 points tonight. Then shooting guard and going with Alex Caruso, $5,100, looking for 25, 26 points. I'm got projected for 27 points tonight. Before the Bulls got their games postponed, he played 38 minutes. So I don't really have a concern about his minutes. He was coming off that hamstring prior to that, but he played big minutes. He's had like over a week off now, so he should be pretty good. The Bulls team doesn't have a lot of depth, so I expect the starters to play big minutes even though it kind of could be sketchy since, you know, they're coming off the COVID uh, protocols. So maybe they don't want to run those guys into the ground, but they don't really have too much of a choice at this point in time if they're trying to win this game. But it is against Houston Rockets, so that's the best part about that, I guess. Then we move down to small forward with Buddy Heald. $5,800, looking for 29 points. I'm going to project it for 31 points tonight. Another guy that's benefiting from the Kings with all these guys being out once again, throwing up as many shots as he can take. So, not anything bad you can say about Buddy Heald for tonight's slate. Then at Power 4, we're going to go with Metu, who is also another king. He's benefited quite a bit, playing bigger minutes. $4,700, looking for 23, 24 points. I'm going to project for about 25, 26 points tonight. Pretty solid value play. This this is one that could potentially change throughout the day as well. And then last but not least, at center position, I went with Jakob Pertl. And, you know, if you've been watching my channel for some time, we know Jakob Pertl is pretty consistent. He's had like two games out of the last couple that were not quite as good. But other than that, throughout the season, been very, very solid overall. I do expect him and Zubak to kind of go back and forth in this game. So you could go with either one. I do like Zubak on the Fandle side preview over there. But Jakob Pertl. You're looking for 31 points out at $6,200. Got projected for about 31, 32 points tonight. think it should be a solid game for him overall once again. But if you go with these five players, you'll have $21,200 remaining, just over $7,000 per player. So you could pay up for a pay-up option if you want to do that. A lot of these pay-up guys are either out or banged up at this point in time, so maybe it's a little bit better day to do a more balanced approach overall. But with that being said, we'll get more to our Fandle and talk about my picks over there as well. So you're going to see some familiar names, and we're going to start off with point guard Alex Caruso. $5,400, looking for 27 points. I am got projected for about 28 points on the Fandle side tonight. Like I already mentioned on the DraftKings side, should be playing big men. The Bulls do not have any depth at this point in time. The only concern you have there, once again, is these guys coming off the COVID list. Are they going to try to limit their minutes a little bit? But at this point in time, they don't really have a choice with the players they do have and the limited depth overall. And then shooting guard, we got Buddy Hield once again, $5,100, looking for 25, 26 points out of him. Got him projected for 30 points on the Fandle side tonight. Like I mentioned on DraftKings side, he's pretty much going to be able to take as many shots as he wants to take in this game, chucking up those threes. Buddy Hield's looking like a pretty good play overall tonight. Then a small forward, I'm going Jalen Brown, still priced down at $7,300. We've been seeing him play a little bit better, more minutes as of late. Jason Tatum may not play in this game. If that's the case, Jalen Brown, I expect to be a great play and a very popular play overall, especially with how banged up this Boston Celtics team is overall. Looking for about 36, 37 points. Adam got projected for about 38 points tonight. Definitely has upside for more as we've seen in the past and if Jason Tatum is not playing in this game tonight. Then at Power Forward, we're going to go with his teammate Robert Williams, $5,600. Looking for about 28 points, Adam. You know, up until the Celtics kind of broke out with some COVID, Robert Williams really wasn't playing more than 22 minutes a game. But Al Horford being out, some limited depth behind him. Been playing closer to 29 minutes a game. About a fantasy point per minute producer. Once again, you're looking for 28 points out of him. Got projected for 29 points tonight. Has a little bit of upside for more on the Fando side. As he does have those games where he has multiple blocks and definitely can put you over the edge in that regard. Then last but not least, we're going to go to Zubak at $5,500. His minutes have been down as of late, but Hartenstein's been playing more. Hartenstein is not available in this game. So... I expect his minutes to go back up closer to 26, 28 minutes. You might see a little bit of Serge Ibaka in there. Maybe not. You might play some small ball behind him as well. But at $5,500, looking for 28 points out. I got projected for 28 points exactly. Definitely has some upside for more as we've seen in the past. You know, going against Jakob Pertl, who's going to be out there for 30 plus minutes, it's going to be a good sign for Zubak for him staying on the court as long as he's not in like foul trouble or anything like that. But with that being said, if you go with these five players on the FanDuel side, you have $31,100 remaining, just under $7,800 per player. So once again, you could pay up for a star player if that's something you want to do. As I kind of mentioned on the DraftKings side, a lot of these guys are either out or banged up at this point in time. But, you know, you could look at a Steph Curry at $9,700. 
But like I mentioned on the DraftKings side, this might end up being a little bit more balanced built approach overall. We'll see if there's any other values that open up throughout the day. As I already mentioned, I'll be listing all the injury updates and starting lineups down in the comments below. So definitely be sure to check up on them once again. But with that being said, these are my picks for both FanDuel and DraftKings for today, December 20th. As always, if you have any questions related to NBA DFS, be sure to leave them down in the comments below and I'll get back to you as quickly as possible. But with that being said, if you are new to my channel, please consider subscribing. Definitely would appreciate it. It helps to build the community that we're trying to build here at Coach Greg Sports, which is one that's truly for you, the viewers, helping you with your DFS, whether it's NBA or NFL, helping you with your fantasy football teams. And then with that being said, if you are a newer current subscriber who's yet to do so, also hit that notification bell down below. It's going to let you know every single time I post up a new video. Like I've been saying, I post up daily NBA DFS videos just like this. Yes, I know I took two days off over the weekend just to get away for a couple days, but pretty consistently throughout the season. I'm going to be here doing daily videos. If there's any changes to that, I'll try to let you guys know ahead of time. But with that being said, that's all I have for today's video. Hopefully you all enjoyed. And then last but not least, special shout out to each and every one of you watching today's video. I truly do appreciate you taking the time out of your day to watch this video. Definitely means a lot to me and I hope each and every one of you has a great rest of your day.